Hello and welcome to Ula Tilly Readings. My name is Lenore and tonight I'm going to be reading your tea leaves. This is a horoscope for Aquarius. If Aquarius is your solar, lunar, ascendant slash rising sign, then this is a message for you. All right, let's get started. And so Aquarius, this is a bonus reading, and our card tonight is the Fool. Okay. Let's take a look and see what's going on here. And so if you have not subscribed yet, please think about doing that. You can hit that little bell. It'll let you know when the next readings are coming out. It is free to subscribe. Also, if you'd like to like the video or leave a comment, I would appreciate you greatly. And if you're new to the channel, definitely shout it out in the comment section. All right, so we have a face. Immediately, <laughs> somebody coming through. Uh, it does look probably like a feminine featured face. We have a hyena down here. You can see. We also have a person who is riding on the back of... It looks like a hog or... Maybe like a, um, what was, what are they called? A boar, a boar, a large male pig. Okay. Right up in here. We have the person sitting up here. So I feel that there's almost a, a feeling of frenzy here or the building Frenzy. Now you can think of a hyena if you've never seen a hyena. They're kind of like a, a dog. I don't know if they're a canine technically, but it is kind of like a dog. They are uh, scavengers. They are um, pack animals. They're very vicious. I mean, they, <laughs> you can imagine like a group of animals and they're hungry and you throw in a big hunk of meat and they just, you know, they go for it. And this is the energy of the hyena. Now also something that you may not know about a hyena, maybe you do, is once they get their grip on something with their mouth, right? They've bitten down. Uh, they can lock their jaw in. So it's almost impossible to get them off of something, right? And the strength is just, you know, beyond your mat, you can imagine. So uh, I'm looking at this and I'm feeling like there is a sense of, I'm not going to say being pestered, but I feel like, Somebody cannot, <laughs> they're just, they cannot be dissuaded from, you know, continually inquiring about possibly like your help with something or, um, you know, maybe this is like a friend or a family member, they are selling something, you know, um, it could be uh, that this is maybe somebody who is interested in courting you, dating you knowing you, just being in your life in some capacity. And I just, I feel like it's just so unwanted and it feels chaotic. You know, the, this idea of being pursued and, and, um, the person not giving up and, you know, um, just not taking no for an answer, right? Just thinking, okay, well, if I keep trying, um, maybe then they'll finally say yes. Well, now we live in a world, right? Hopefully, anyways, we're coming to this consciousness that uh, that's really not how we should be treating one another, right? <laughs> if somebody says, no, I don't want to know you, then yeah, we should say, okay, yeah, I, I hear you. Thank you, you know, for being open and honest and whatever. And, uh, you know, 
I'll take my reprieve. And uh, it's not always like that, is it? You know, it just, it isn't. And <laughs> so I do, I feel like there's almost this energy of feeling um, really almost like boundaries have been not only pushed, but just completely stomped over, right? And I feel that this is becoming a situation where um, you might have to be even more clear than you already have been, okay? Um, no, I'm not giving you money. No, I'm not giving you money in the future, you know? Um, no, I don't want to go out on a date with you. Um, I'm not interested. I'll never be interested, you know? And however we, however we have to say that, but having to say it, somewhat clearly because some people just don't they don't get the hint right and uh but at the same time we have to be safe about how we communicate to people especially if they're going to feel rejected that's another dynamic here um now we have the person riding on the hog or the boar so i feel like yeah there maybe is this need to contain the aggression that you're starting to maybe feel, um, kind of this, it feels like this energy of, I'm annoyed, I'm not even just annoyed, I'm upset that you won't just listen to me, right? That like, you're making me feel um, cornered, maybe even somewhat unsafe. And there, I feel like that there is an anger, kind of a fight or flight response rising in you. Um, and I think that with this boar, which we, if you can think of a large wild pig, right? Uh, if you get too close to them, they're gonna charge you. I mean, they're just going to attack you until they can't anymore. And I feel like you're getting into that position where it is. It's going to, you're really going to have to, um, you know, temper yourself because there is this, this, I'm going to take up for myself. I'm going to protect myself. I'm not going to allow this kind of energy to enter my life and continue. I've said no. I have made it clear, you know, um, I, or, you know, I'm, I'm working up to that, right? And I think that the thing here is that uh, we have to be mindful even when we feel like we just, you know, we want to, we, we're, and maybe even is like muscle memory. We get into that kind of, that posture of, being um, on the defense, right? I, re I always think of this time, I lived in the city m almost my whole life, right? Different cities, but city, city life. And I moved to a small town. I mean, to me, it was a pretty small town. Now it was maybe like, you know, um, I think 30 or 40,000 people live there, which felt very small compared to what I was used to. And I was shopping at a store and it's just like, you know, everybody kind of knows, not everybody knows each other, but it feels like that, right? <laughs> a lot of these people have lived there their whole lives. They're interconnected. Crime is really low, you know, whatever. Um, me, I'm from the city. I don't trust anybody. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, uh, I just, <laughs> there's, you know, you just have that eyes on the back of your head. You have to. Um, especially because I took public transit for a long time. And, um, yeah, somebody, I was in the store, I was shopping. There was a lady with her her daughter i think or whoever a young child this is before i had my daughter and uh i'm shopping and and um 
they walk behind me there and it's this kind of, you know, it's this aisle, it's a smaller aisle, um, and get really close to me. And I don't, I think she maybe brushed against me or whatever, you know, it was innocent. There was nothing going on there, but immediately I was like in that mindset, is she trying to like, like pickpocket me or steal my bird, you know what I mean? And it's like, and I got into that kind of ag aggressive, um, defensive posture, you know? And I thought to myself afterwards, when I kind of realized what was going on, she's trying to wrangle this toddler. Um, you know, I need to... I need to try to learn to temper myself a little bit. Now, I don't like people touching me and <laughs> strangers. I don't like, I don't even go get my hair cut, right? Because uh, I just don't, I don't like being touched by people I don't know. Um, I don't like being that close to people I don't know um, for too long. Right? <laughs> it just, it's, you know, it's part of whatever my anxieties about life and the world. Um, but it is this feeling of, trying to master those moments. Now, sometimes we can't. Sometimes it's just really ingrained in us. Sometimes we feel things that um, are very valid, right? Our intuition goes off and it's valid, but because of our social conditioning and, um, you know, generally I think we want to trust people. We want to... Um, you know, feel like we're safe in the world and, and everything else, uh, you know, we do. We might rationalize, okay, now I see what's going on here. I jump to a conclusion or really I just had this like physical reaction. And, um, but I need to control maybe how I, f you know, how these moments happen. How, do, how am I going to react, right? How am I going to react? Especially if the adrenaline and all that starts going. So I look at this and I feel like, you know, you have this situation happening. And I feel like it, it not only does it make you feel uncomfortable, uh, maybe offended because you don't feel heard, right? Uh, but... There's also just, I think that because it, it's like somebody just comes into your life or this situation ha uh, arises in your life and you have to like take time to look at it. It almost feels, um, it feels like it's a, uh, what's the word? It's, you're almost resentful because I have to even put up with this energy, right? This absolutely, it, it just, it steals the vibe of my life because there's this part of it where I feel, um, you know, trespassed against. And that can feel like a big problem, right? And so I'm looking at this and as we turn it, it looks like we have a boat, okay? We have a boat, we have a kite, and let's see, we have a snake. So the kite for me is always, it represents contemplation. The snake in this situation, I think, really is about looking at the information altogether. Now, the boat here, I feel like, is getting into this place of allowing the energies to kind of move through your life, not getting stuck on this thing. Because they feel like it is one of those uh, situations that can feel almost well, kind of triggering, I think. And I think this calls upon like old feelings as well. I feel like this is not the first time that you've had somebody kind of come around or, you know, um, really trying to lay it on 
thick, right? Um, or really trying to finesse you to kind of get some money, trying to, um, you know, get back in your good graces or whatever. And I think that, you know, this maybe be is a totally different situation from before, but I feel like it kind of brings up those old, those old feelings. Like I've dealt with something like this before and, and it was awful, you know, or it was like just something that was so inconvenient. I had to continue to deal with it and I really don't want to have to go through that again. So let's take a look. We're going to look at the radiant or oracle of the radiant sun that's what these cards are called and i want to look at these kind of clarifying things how are we going to kind of deal with this what is it going to look like okay so i'm going to just flip through i'm not i'm terrible at um okay so we have order i'm terrible at shuffling so i just kind of flip through and i i don't know i have I'm sure I could find a better way to do it, but it's the easiest way. Okay, so we have order, enthusiasm, and then let's see. We'll go from the back here, I think. And it says adaptability. Okay, so order, enthusiasm, adaptability. All right, so I feel like... There, it, it really is this kind of refocusing, right? This thing happens. I, it's like, you know, so all of a sudden somebody at work has a crush on you. They are pursuing you. You don't like it. You know, you've maybe told them I'm not interested. There's still that energy. They maybe even are still pursuing you. And you're getting to a point where maybe you have to talk to HR or, um, you know, maybe it's even like something more um, nefarious where it's like, you know, somebody who is married or something and they're pursuing you and you're like, I know your spouse, like what is going on? You know, something like this where it's like you're getting to the point where I have to do something here, you know, because whatever I've been saying isn't working. So I feel like restoring an order to things is really the goal and ultimately I think is where it ends up, you know. Now in the absence of this distraction, I feel that there is this kind of renewed energy enthusiasm for, right, this next thing that you're going to be doing, whatever it is. What is your next project, your next job, your next um, maybe you're traveling somewhere, uh, whatever it is, I feel like it's kind of, this is gone, this whole situation over. Now I can kind of turn my gaze back towards this thing that I actually want to be doing. Okay. And I feel like in this time, you know, there has, you've had to be pretty adaptable. You've had to not only be adaptable, you've had to kind of be a little bit diplomatic, right? Uh, because listen, an Aquarius person is not going to be, you know, put in um, a situation where somebody else is controlling how they feel and what they're doing. And that's kind of what this energy feels like, you know. Um, it's even as simple as something like, uh, this person keeps asking me out. I told them I was busy. Now I'm scared to, um, you know, post something on, uh, social media because I don't want them to see what I'm actually doing. I don't want them to know that I just blew them off. Here I am at home with the cat, you know, and I, and watching TV or whatever, and I was going to post something funny, but now I don't know because they might see it right? And it might be weird. And this kind of energy is so, first of all, it's boring, right? Who wants to deal with that? But uh, yeah, it's oppressive and it sucks. And so I feel that, you know, in this time, as you're relieved of this kind of, you know, whatever, feeling like you're being watched to some degree, right? 
you are getting back into the thing that you're really interested in doing right now. This is not going to, you know, uh, ruin your uh, path forward. This is, and here's the thing is that it's always somebody that, you know, like they're not, it's not, this isn't the love of your life. This isn't somebody that you are super into or, or whatever. It's like some random person, right? But yet they create this huge feeling of, you know, whatever it is. Maybe it is being unsafe or feeling you know, troubled, uh, by their persistence. And, um, you know, that's, it just, it's not a fun feeling, you know, and we've all, we've all had it. We've all been there. We've all, you know, dealt with people like this. So, you know, when it comes back around, it's like, why is this happening? Why, you know, um, I don't want to deal with this right now, uh, but you have to. So, uh, I do see it to me it really looks very similar to the, now I know you might be like, what are you talking about? Uh, but it does look similar. The posture here of a person right here as the full card. So ultimately, and now I think that at the end of this kind of you know, little situation that you are dealing with, uh, there is a space here to be having fun. There's a space here to be going a wandering, right? And I think, you know, this is a time where maybe I, and I just keep getting this feeling of maybe going and seeing some music or, going to like an outdoor festival type thing, um, maybe like a farmer's market where they're playing music in, somewhere in the background there, um, something. It, it feels, I can imagine you kind of um, stepping outside of the normal routine of things, going and doing something exciting and fun and, and really getting in that fool posture, right? Losing the inhibition a little bit and um, allowing yourself to really get like immersed in what's happening. And, um, and I do, I think that's something that is, it feels very needed. Now, I feel that we also must have this meeting with the Oracle we have a, it looks like an oracle right here. We have one, two, three people kind of standing in line. Um, this one and this one looks like they're on their knees, actually. So I feel this, it almost, it's like you are going to cross paths with somebody who, it just, they feel otherworldly. They feel quite magical. Uh, if you've ever just randomly met somebody who they're just so tuned in to like spirit and the way that they conduct themselves, the way that they speak, it's enchanting, right? Uh, and you feel like, okay, this person, they're on a whole different tip. Like they're not living in the same reality that we <laughs> that the rest of us are and i i see you kind of coming upon this person on accident but i think that uh you know there is it is i don't want to say faded i don't know if i believe in fate but it feels that way it was supposed to happen you were put in their path and they were put in yours on purpose and there will be some kind of, I almost feel like of working together. I was thinking that maybe they have some kind of answer for you. There's something important there. I, it, yes, that's all entangled with it, but it feels almost like there will be some kind of collaboration or working together in some capacity. 
And I feel like this is very much about this next period of time for you. Is when you meet this person, um, it, it's like you have known each other forever. And I can see you spending a lot of time with them, a lot of time getting to know them, a lot of time kind of working together towards common spiritual magical goals. And I think that's something that is going to be quite a change for you. Um, it feels like one of the most authentic connections that you're going to have, maybe in your whole life. Uh, so yes, keep your eyes out. Keep your, or yes, is that, yes, keep your eyes, that sounds weird. <laughs> keep your eyes peeled. <laughs> That's also weird. Um, let's go ahead. I'm going to flip through and stop where it feels right. Astral web. These are the gratitude affirmation cards from Purple Canyon, by the way. And it says, astral web, I am held safely in a beautiful astral web of relationships. I am grateful for hundreds of people who serve my needs, from producing the food that I eat to making the clothing that I wear. I give thanks for every hidden strand in the web of my life. Practice. Give thanks for three plus acquaintances or strangers in your community who serve you even if you have never met them. I like that one. It is. It's wild to think how many connections we have to people that we will never ever know. So many. So, uh, Aquarius, I'm going to tell you I love you because I do, and I thank you so much for spending this time with me. It is always such an honor to be able to bring these messages to you, and if you would be so kind as to like the video, it really does help the channel so much, and if you have not subscribed yet, please think about doing that. You can hit that little bell. It'll let you know when the next readings are coming out. It is free to subscribe. <laughs> <laughs> and um, if you'd like to leave a comment, please do. Uh, I love hearing from each and every one of you, especially if you're new to the channel. Definitely shout it out in the comment section. And uh, with that, I will say again, I love you. Take care of yourself. We'll talk real soon. Good night. Good night. Good night.